What is going on, everyone? It's Topomatic here, and we are doing something so completely different than what you're normally used to seeing. Normally, we do like a speed art uh, kind of thing, but today I thought I would do something a little bit different. I, I'm giving you the opportunity to not only uh, work along this and maybe recreate this very same image, I'm going to include the assets, the links to all the assets that I use in this image below. So you can try to recreate this if you'd like to. But I'm also gonna go through a layer breakdown and kind of break down each of the layers, the design process, and what I did to create this end result you see here. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and, and get started. Now, this is the actual end result, which is normally you don't see this until the end of the video, but you're gonna see at the beginning of the video for the, the, the layer breakdown, and then of course we'll show it at the end again. Um, so to get this was a series of multiple layers that we're gonna break down as well as a finalized touch in uh, camera raw filter. And we're gonna explain that process as well. And go from there. So let's start with, our, with our, just our blank scene. Now I'm gonna try to do this in the order that I did. So don't mind the, the hopping around a little bit because these are in order of, uh, of what makes the most sense. But I always started, I, I started with my, my foreground building, which is the, the main structure of the layers and i masked out the sky which you're gonna find here um here's my buildings the sky is masked out now I'm, I'm gonna be open and honest with everyone watching this video my layers are never this organized <laughs> it's usually extremely chaotic uh but i somehow always know where everything's at i just i've spent so long using photoshop i tend to know where things are going and I do use folders periodically, if I, especially if I'm getting more involved stuff, I'm like, oh yeah, I definitely need to go in a folder, but it's normally never this organized. So um, I'm not some Photoshop wizard, wizard that goes crazy with folders like this. This is way more organized than it normally and ever, ever is. If you see some of my time-lapse videos, you'll see how chaotic it really is. So this is not how it normally looks. Uh, so the foreground buildings are, and you're going to see some of the lighting that we have kind of on here now, but I'm going to turn this off. This is basically the, the initial image that we started out with, and we wanted to create more. I, I knew what I was going for, you know, because there's a concept design that I start with, like a mock-up. I kind of place some things down. I'll draw some things out, and I'll kind of have a little bit of an idea of what I want to do before I actually go in and start doing it. It's a, it's a really... It's much easier to go through the creative process when you kind of already have an idea and then you spend some time finding the assets to match in there. And then sometimes when you're putting some of those assets into the video or the video, into the scene, sorry, I'm recording the video, then it might inspire some new ideas and you can kind of go from there. But this is basically the, the, the starting image that I started with. This was this was the first image and I knew I wanted more of like a, a fighting chaotic war kind of going on like an alien invasion and the initial mock-up which i wish i still had it. i had it on my computer and i closed it down and it didn't save uh but normally i have like a, a mock-up design i wish that one would have saved but it didn't for, for this particular video uh, but we wanted we wanted definitely a darker um not night but more there's no sun really kind of coming through because there's so much smoke kind of thing. So we use a photo filter, which you see here to, to go and colorize it and make it a little bit darker by adding like a blue tint. Typically, if you want more of a nighttime or a darker tone, you can go more of a blue, which is a little bit more natural. And then kind of adjust your density here to lighten, make it darker. Now this is a little bit too blue. I think we had it right around here somewhere. And make sure you uncheck preserve luminosity. Otherwise, it's just gonna look bad. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't do what you want to do. Um, and for now, I'm going to go ahead and keep the, the lights and everything, the, the glow that we had on this on the scene off. And we'll kind of explain that a little bit later because I didn't do that in the process. Uh, the next thing I put in was actually the mothership which was above. And again, um, this is the, the initial design here. It goes above the entire uh, scene. We wanted it to, I wanted it to be crazy large. Um, and then of course, a little bit darker uh, to kind of 
give that again no light really kind of coming through i i would thought about adding lights to the mothership like you know like an alien spacecraft but i felt like it was taken away from the entire scene so in my mock-up design when i was playing around with some different things i nixed the idea otherwise i my initial idea was to go with lights now and I took it out. And then we added some perspective haze for the background. Now my background was just like a, a little bit like a, a sky color. But again, most of this you're not gonna see. And the gray here that you see painted on there was just some extra painting I did. I didn't realize it in the background. I normally do it on its own layer, but you know, what can you do? Second, we added a background city uh, light. Uh, I just realized there's one more thing. That's gonna be a talking point a little bit later. No spoilers. Then we added our background cityscape, which is a uh, and I don't know what I'm trying to say here, it's just not coming out. <laughs> apocalyptic, there we go. An apocalyptic dis distorted building. Uh, I got this from another site called uh, Production Crate, which does a lot of videos, uh, but they have some graphic assets as well. This one, these are not. This one's not free, unfortunately. Um, I think it's like a $10 a month fee to use production crate. They don't have that many assets, but some of the assets are very particular to certain things, uh, which is one of the reasons why I used it in this instance. And I've been I've been a member of production crate for a while um, for, for like video editing and stuff. So but that's what these are. And all I did was just, I included two of them, mirrored them over. And uh, again, this is the initial asset, take that off there. And we just kind of adjusted some of the lighting, brightness and contrast, as well as the photo filter should be. Let's see. If we can up. Oh, this one was strictly brightness and contrast. I adjusted some of the other stuff later. Photo filters here on the entire folder. Because they were the same assets, I could adjust them simultaneously uh, into the folder that it was, that was in the skyline background. But I added those in the background. Uh, and then, you know, we added the photo filter to kind of darken it up. And then these lights, which we'll explain a little bit later, I'm going to come back to those a little bit further into the video as we break down the layers even further. But I like to set down a, a basic outline of what I want, where I want it first before I start getting into the nitty gritty details. Um, so I'll work often back and forth in between layers. So I'll be going up and down into my folders based on where I'm working. That's just my design process. Everyone works a little bit differently, but for me, this this works best. So uh, the next thing we wanted to include in there, I, I think I included my explosion. Yeah, we got in, we got into that. And this explosion is broken down into several layers. We got uh, our outer glow and then the explosion, which has a little bit of a hard mix, um, which just adds, it makes it just a, a tad bit brighter, but we don't want to go crazy. Only at 25%, otherwise it looks really, really distorted. I wanted to create a small amount of distortion, but at about 25%. I think it's where I added that. Um, and then, of course, we had a little bit of glow effect, manually just by painting over with a soft round brush in, in these areas here. Um, and we added our smoke fillers because there's fire, there's damage. This is going to be an entire war. Uh, and with the smoke, it's basically just the smoke layer, uh, which is a 3D asset you can get from Envato Elements, and you can rotate that, uh, which is one of the reasons why I went with that, because I can include more than one element. Um, and all I did was just darken that um, using the brightness and contrast feature. So went from there to a little bit darker based on the environment that we were creating. And we also added a second smokestack over here behind the explosion to create that little bit of depth. Um, and now we're starting to add some different elements in there. Now, before I add anything more to the foreground, we're still working on the background. Uh, I'm, I'm trying, this is my, this is my design process. I knew what I was doing for the foreground, but the middle ground and in between the cityscape, I knew I wanted more of a fire. Like, completely chaotic. So we started with a little bit of a glow right down here. We wanted to create this element of that was glowing. Um, and then we started adding the fire and flames, which we added to behind here. And this is 
going to be important. Uh, we'll, we'll explain explain more about the foreground here in a second. Uh, and all I did was just this is just a couple different fire uh, elements repeated and, and and moved around. This is this is the actual fire element uh, that I that I put into the layer and all then held down Alt, duplicated it, rotated it, and kind of moved it around, which was perfect because it created a different look. It didn't feel like it was copied and pasted, but I didn't have to go and search for like a million different assets for flames. I could use the same one, just rotate it around. I made it a little bit brighter because for whatever reason, it seems to be a little bit too red in there and uh, added that. And then of course, added another little flame over here to kind of make it feel like something was just caught fire and was burning in the background. Uh, and then we added this big end brightness contrast just to kind of adjust that a little bit because show um it was a little too bright in the background and uh, the initial image had really really white smoke so i just masked some of that out to kind of blend it into the background a little bit as well uh, and then of course we want to add some embers and these embers are just a download that you can get from again envato elements just like so shrunken down and then using the screen screen category to because your normal is going to look like this screen to kind of hit down some of the darker background part of it and then just a little bit of mask layer to kind of clean up the edges with a soft round brush will kind of clean it up make it look more natural in the background but now we got our embers in the background and it definitely feels like there's a lot more fire there's a lot of stuff going on in the background there um and i was very happy with that but now we got to start working on the foreground a little bit and that's where we're going to take you back into here that is why we have the UN saturation. We wanted to add a little bit of light to the buildings here to kind of give that glow from, from the fire. Now, there's gonna be a lot up here, but we're gonna explain why that's there a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna work on just this little area right here where there's flames. I'm gonna try to zoom in. We, uh, with a little paintbrush tool, I just changed the, uh, the hue and saturation a little bit more and I painted that in there. The second thing we wanted to do is I wanted to be brighter towards that fire to kind of give that element that it, it, well, not only is it right there, but it's burning and it's hot. So we increase our exposure. Uh, we add the exposure element, but I had a problem when I was doing this. It just didn't feel, this line here just didn't feel right. And it was the same thing over here. Now this one looks really, really good. Uh, in comparison to this one, just it felt too separated. So I just created an extra little layer, did a clipping mask that would just only hit the buildings here on the side and just ran a little a little bit of a, a, a shader brush with some white to kind of blend that in. So it felt like the building was absolutely on fire. And that explains the foreground buildings almost 100%. Um, Next, we're going to move on to our soldiers. Uh, we actually added the car elements in here first, and that was broken down into a couple different things. Um, that's the foreground building. And so we added a car, and some, dis some destroyed cars here, put into the foreground. <clears throat> and again, that's broken down into our photo filter to kind of darken it up a little bit, kind of match the environment, that blue darker blue overtone not quite night but just you gotta the feeling that it's just kind of dark right now we're gonna go back and discuss the background because there's something i completely overlooked there but after the cars um and then again we're gonna change the hue and saturation uh that we add because i wanted to add some fire but i needed to use this little element for glow uh so the hue and saturation was added to kind of give a little bit of a reflective area, some parts that were not maybe on fire. Um, now this part, you're not gonna see a whole lot because it was actually covered by another element. So I only work in the areas that I'm actually designing in. But we, there's another section that I completely missed, which is our smoke background. Completely forgot to click that back on. And, and this is just, again, our clouds. These clouds here just inverted hitting control i which would take 
this part make it white and this part make it black and just in the background to kind of give that really hazy dark uh background look um once i got the car down then we started adding our soldiers in so we have a soldier here which is broken down uh again we're going to click these all off we can kind of break that down i did all the soldiers all at once so broke them down and i'm going to take you through each of the elements here they were pretty much from the same assets i found them Catch, not really. Where's my, where's my other soldier? I have one more soldier set somewhere. Oh, and here, soldier two. And break this one down. So, take you through the final soldiers. There's three soldier assets. I wanted some that were a little bit further in the distance, hiding behind the car. There's someone that's running towards whatever danger we have going on here. And then this one's kind of in the back. Um, taking some shots going to be taking some shots towards whatever aliens exist in the environment here so starting with this one down here this is the first one i worked with and we just added our photo filter to kind of match the environment a little bit more but i wanted them to be a little bit darker so we added some elements we zoom in on these gentlemen over here uh, and that's where you kind of see the shadows now you start to see why there's elements here exist in the foreground they're just basic lighting for like the fire that existed around the area and we have our heating saturation we added on to add some extra glow to uh, the top and back of their uh, their helmets and their backpacks and their shirts and we did the same thing with some exposure just to kind of brighten it up a little bit more and even more exposure just to reverse to kind of add some more shadow elements and they're off in the distance, so they're not going to be as noticeable, but that's the breakdown of them. And we move on to our running soldiers, which again, photo filter, a little blue hue to kind of match the environment. And we uh, darkened them up a little bit. We added a hue. <laughs> again, there's a reason that these guys have uh, this element we had the last step of the way i added some fire it was feeling a little little empty over here in the corner um so i added some fire which would then add some brightness to these guys here which is why you're gonna see them kind of lit up there now we're on the last soldier here where we're gonna break this down which pretty much we're gonna break it down exactly like we did the previous two we add our photo filter which we've used for all the other ones to kind of give it a little bit of a bluer tint now this one I, I wanted to keep a little bit brighter but primarily because we i knew we we're gonna have fire right over here um i adjusted a little bit of the brightness of contrast to bring down when i say brighter i meant the blue i want the blue to be brighter than some of the other versions that we did um and of course highlight where the fire would be kind of give that glow uh same thing with some of the edges we added some exposure uh brighten that up and uh, some shadow on the opposite end as well. Now we're gonna touch this up even more once we get finalized with the camera raw filter and you know, uh, changing some exposure from the, the entire thing. However, we're very, very close to being done. Our, our final thing we wanna add in here is our alien. That we moved up at the top. Uh, and this guy was, uh, a purchased asset through Adobe Stock. I had previously done a different alien and I wanted to do something a little bit more, I guess a traditional alien style. I, 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 I would I guess that's gonna be the, we, what we'll call it. So this was the asset that we used. Uh, I wanted to definitely darken them up a little bit. So I added, some brightness and contrast uh to the overall image uh now i didn't i didn't add a photo filter because the the tone of the alien was already kind of a gray blue so i didn't really need to add any more to that uh we did adjust some human saturation for some lighting um especially since it's going to be like an explosion behind them we want some reflection here anywhere that there would have been fire uh we probably could have done a little bit more and added a new hue and saturation primarily for the eyes i wanted to make the eyes kind of stand out 
uh, and then we can kind of overexpose it a little bit uh, with the exposure setting and then just build in with the eyes to kind of give them that that glow my goal with the aliens is to make them as menacing and as massive as i could without being overly done these things are monsters which goes along with the uh the giant alien uh mothership now i, I do have some other lasers and we added some lasers to the background i wanted as we're, as we're getting close to the very end of this i wanted to kind of give some purpose for the explosions so i i, I drew in some lines and did a little bit of uh i'll show here for these did a little motion blur on them so these lines are just basically white lines that i drew with a normal paintbrush um and add a little bit of uh, an outer glow to them and a little bit of an inner glow just to kind of keep it a little bit blended in there and then added a little bit of a motion blur kind of give this blur effect and then i duplicated it over here um but i also added another one in the foreground because i wanted something a little bit more up front kind of give the illusion that we had some sort of like maybe out of the frame but an alien attack by some other ships to kind of give purpose for the flames and the fires and the explosions we know that something is going down and a purpose for why these guys our soldiers are fighting and moving forward now our soldier here is not quite done we still have to add him shooting um he's going to be kind of shooting at the aliens so we added a muscle flash um effect to this as well a muzzle flash is just a simple uh, muzzle flash we got through in vital elements and then you know just brighten it up a little bit drop it down the basic muzzle flash uh i brightened it up just a very 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 little bit just to kind of give a little bit brighter look uh added a little bit of a glow and then i actually did a little bit of line work with, with the paintbrush tool i actually drew in just to kind of give a directional feel uh for the bullet projector trajectory and uh trajectory not trajectory trajectory and then finally once once this is all said and done we uh added some overlays and embers in the foreground just to kind of give that ambiance and a little bit of extra to it uh once that was done then we take this and moved into the raw camera filter so we're going to go ahead and uh camera raw filter that we're going to put in here and I'll take you through the steps that I did up. Oh, actually, oh, that's what I want. The best thing to do is to highlight the entire frame. If you haven't already done this before, copy it into another frame, which is normally what I do, and then take it into your uh, camera raw filter. It just saves a lot of hassle. So here's our here's our our almost finalized image that we did, and then taking it through the camera raw filter is just adjusting some of the, the, the values. Giving a little bit more of a brighter, warmer tone, like pushing it to yellow, uh, adding some contrast. But you can see now it's going to kind of darken up a little bit. We're getting closer to the tonal values that we saw in the end result. Um, we can brighten up some of the highlights to kind of give more of that glow. There's something I kind of want to do, especially for the fire. Uh, the shadows can kind of stay where they're at. They don't need to be brightened up. We don't really want to go too far. We don't want to overly distort or overexpose anything either uh add a little texture value just kind of give it a little bit more uh clarity just a little bit vibrance again just a little bit uh and for the most part i'm done with that area there and then we go to our curves this is where i added a little bit more um undertones to kind of really separate the darks and the lights so for the input on the, on the lower end of the spectrum and we do the same thing for the reds instead of pushing to the green i want maybe some of those redder values kind of pushing down on the uh the dark end of the spectrum uh and then for i think the blue is we want to push that into the more yellowish side but not again not too much enough to there we go to so give more of a very fiery very almost a hellacious feel to it um a little bit of color noise reduction other than that i don't really do much in there 
Uh, for the color mixer, I, I wanted to take my reds, oranges, and yellows, to add a little bit of luminance to it. Uh, there's not much red in here other than the lasers, and we want to kind of saturate that up, and kind of make them pop out a little bit more. Too much. Uh, but for, definitely for the oranges and the yellows uh, tones, I want to make sure that those are pushing into the right tonal values that I want. Good right there. And then give a little bit of luminous, which is going to make that fire just feel hotter and glow a little bit more. Uh, I don't want to see too much saturation with that. I think actually you probably find where it was at. So just kind of keep that alone. And once again, do the same thing for the yellows pushing it away from the green and more into the yellow tones. Don't really need to go too far. Uh, and then increasing the luminance just a little bit. Again, make it brighter, make it kind of stand out a little bit more. Uh, color grading, I don't think I really touched this too much. I kind of, I kind of overlooked uh, this one. But instead, we went to create the calibration where we went to our uh, shadows. I wanted to tint into that and do more magenta. Uh, the red primary, we want to make sure that's orange versus red. Uh, and again, the green primary more the yellow. And I might go back into my curve value. You can play around with the camera raw filter to, to get it to where you like it. We just hit OK. And the end result is pretty similar to the one. I did a little distortion on the other one. A little distortion. But this is the end result of we added a little bit darker tones uh, to it. But if you enjoyed this video, please, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe below. But this is our behind the layers, our, our basically a layer breakdown. And hopefully you learned a little bit about how I designed as well as maybe, you know, made it a little bit easier for you to follow along. If you followed along and you want to create something yourself, feel free to send me uh, a sample of what you did, you know, whether you replicated it exactly or you made your own version, you can do so in the Discord. Uh, that link is below in the description as well. But you guys have a wonderful weekend. And until next time, keep creating.